For this part of the lecture, we first recall a result from the first lecture concerning radicals of function where the index is an even integer. Now, suppose that the limit of the function as x tends to a is equal to l. So, in the last lecture, we considered two cases one case where L is positive and the other case where L is negative. Note that when L is positive, when the limit is positive and the index of the radical is even, to get the limit of the nth root of F as X tends to A, all we need to do is to get the nth root of the positive limit L. Okay. On the other hand, when the limit L is negative, then the limit of the nth root of f as x tends to a does not exist. Now, the number l can be positive, can be negative, but it can also be equal to 0. Now, what happens when precisely the limit of f of x as x tends to, to a is equal to 0? What can we say about the limit of the nth root of f of x as x tends to a when the, radic when the index of the radical is an even integer. To answer that question, let us first consider this function f of x given by 9 minus x squared. Now, we can easily see the following observation. When you take the limit of f of x as x tends to negative 3, what you get is 0. Moreover, the limit of the same function as x tends to 3 is also 0. So in this case, the limits L are precisely 0. Now, let us look at 9 minus x squared. This is factorable. This 9 minus x squared factors as 3 plus x times 3 minus x. Now, what we want to do is to consider the sign of this f of x according to the value of x. So, in particular, we see that when x is less than negative 3, this product 3 plus x times 3 minus x is negative. So, again, for any x value less than negative 3, this product is negative. So that means also that for x values very, very close to negative 3, but are less than negative 3, this product here is very, very close to 0, but they, the numbers are negative. Alright? Now, when x is between negative 3 and 3, the sign of this product is positive. And likewise, when x is greater than 3, the sign of this product is negative. In particular, if you consider x values that are very, very close to 3, but are greater than 3, this product here is negative. In contrast, if we consider x values that are very, very close to 3, but are less than 3, this product is positive. Alright? Now, again, this f of x here tends to 0 if x tends to negative 3. Likewise, this function f tends to 0 as x tends to 3. But we can say more. So as x tends to negative 3 from the left side, so we are looking at this part of the table, we know that f of x tends to 0. But as it tends to 0, the function passes through negative values. 
okay? Now, when x is tending to negative 3 from the right side, so that means we are looking at x values that are very, very close to negative 3, but are greater than negative 3, the product 3 plus x, 3 minus x, has this sign, positive. And so we say that f of x is passing through 0, or rather, f of x is tending to 0, passing through positive values as it approaches 0. Okay? Similarly, let us consider the point x equals 3. So we can approach 3 from two directions, from the left and from the right. Now let us first consider the left direction. So as x tends to 3 from the left side, f of x also tends to 0. But as it does, the function f passes through positive values. And finally, as x tends to 3 from the positive side, from the right side, f of x tends to 0 passing through negative values as it approaches 0. Alright? Now, we introduce a notation. So suppose the limit of f of x as x tends to a is equal to 0. If f of x approaches 0 through positive values, we write f of x tends to 0 plus. Or we say f of x tends to 0 from the right side. Okay? Likewise, if f of x approaches 0 through negative values, we write f of x tends to 0 minus or f of x tends to 0 from the left side. And so using this notation, we can rewrite our observation as follows. So again, our function is f given by 9 minus x squared, the limit of f as x tends to negative 3 is 0, and the limit of f as x tends to 3 is 0. And so, as x tends to negative 3 from the left, f of x tends to 0 minus. As x tends to negative 3 from the right, f of x tends to 0 plus. So we are just rewriting our previous conclusions. And we have uh, f of x tends to 0 plus and f of x tends to 0 minus for the last two cases. Okay? So, it's time to consider some examples. Now, f of x here is given by 2 minus x. We want to consider the point 2. When x is 2, the limit of the function is 0. Alright? Now, with, with respect to 2, we have two directions, the plus and the minus directions, or the right and left directions. Let us first consider x tending to 2 minus. Alright? So this means that we are considering x values that are very, very close to 2, but on the left side of 2. So these are numbers that are less than 2. For example, 1.9999. And if you look at f of x, when you are considering x values that are less than 2, 2 minus x is positive. Right? So for example, when x is 1.99, this difference is positive, but very, very close to 0. So we write f of x tends to 0 plus in this case. On the other hand, when x tends to 2 plus, that means that we are considering x values that are very, very close to 2 but are greater than 2. So for example, 2.1 or 2.01, plugging in those values, 
to x in 2 minus x, we get a negative number. And in fact, for any x value greater than 2, this 2 minus x here is negative. So f of x approaches 0 through negative values. All right? Next. For the next example, let us consider g of x equal to 2 minus x raised to the second power. Right? Now, let us consider 2 again because 2 uh, will make this expression equal to 0. Alright? So, as x tends to 2, notice that g of x tends to 0 but through positive values because of the nature of the function g. g is a square, so it can only have non-negative values as its output. Okay? So, if we consider x values very, very close to 2, whether those values are greater than 2 or less than 2, we will get something that is very, very close to zero, but that something is greater than zero. So we have zero plus in this case. All right. Now, so as a note, we can now answer our previously stated problem of computing the limit of the nth root of some function as x tends to a number a where the rad where the index of the radical is even is an even positive integer okay so if as x tends to a f of x tends to 0 plus then the limit of the nth root of f of x as x tends to a is 0 that means this number here inside the radical sign, you can think of it as 0 plus. So when you take the nth root of that, you are taking the nth root of 0 and you get 0. But the 0 here is a number very, very close to 0 that is positive. Okay? On the other hand, if as x tends to a, f of x tends to 0 minus, then... This limit here, the limit of the nth root of f of x as x tends to a, does not exist. Because you can think of it this way. You will have the nth root of 0 minus. And 0 minus is a small, very, very small negative number. So you cannot have the nth root of a small number when n is even the nth root of a small negative number. Okay? So I hope um, that is clear. We can now look at some examples. Alright? So for the first one, the limit of the square root of 2x squared plus x minus 1 as x tends to negative 1 from the left side. Okay? If you plug in negative 1, you will get 0. Okay, you will get 0. Now, this is factorable. This 2x squared plus x minus 1 is factorable. It factors as 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. Right? This 2x minus 1, this part, when you plug in negative 1, you will get negative 3. Okay? Now, what becomes of x plus 1? When you plug in negative 1 to x in x plus 1, you will get 0. But is it 0 plus or 0 minus? You can take a test point to check. So maybe you can take negative 1.1 or negative 1.01. Plug in that number here. What do you get? Do you get a positive number or a negative number? Yes, we get a negative number. So this, is, this part is 0 minus. So we have negative 3 times 0 minus. So we are multiplying here actually two negative numbers. So what we get is 0 plus. And so we have the square root of 0 plus, And that will be 
zero. All right? Now, on the other hand, if we consider the same square root, but this time, let us make x tends to negative 1 from the right side. What happens? All right? So again, 2x minus 1 will give us negative 3. But this time, note that since we are making x approach negative 1 from the right side, we are considering x values that are very close to negative 1 but are greater than negative 1. For example, you can take negative 0 0.9. Alright? And when you plug in that number here, what do you get? You get a small positive number. And let us represent that number by 0 plus. And so we have negative 3 times 0 plus. So here we have a negative number times a positive number. We get 0 minus. So the square root of 0 minus, we cannot have that. And so we say that the limit of the square root of 2x squared plus x minus 1 does not exist when we want x to tend to negative 1 from the right side. And so here, using the two previous examples, we see that the two one-sided limits do not agree in value precisely because one-sided limit, one of the two one-sided limits is non-existent. And so we say that the limit of the square root of 2x squared plus x minus 1 as x tends to negative 1 does not exist.